Hey yo, what is going on, viewers of the tube? I'm your host, Tyler, and welcome to the one and only crypto channel that brings forward the crypto stories some people don't want to hear until it's too late. I'm telling you, keep your ears open and don't label everything as FUD. It just might save your booty. It's time for Chico Crypto. So something happened in the crypto world that was just brushed under the rug. Literally no major news outlet talked about it, yet it has some big implications for some damn big crypto projects. What news am I talking about? The resignation of Overstock CEO Patrick Byrne due to some bizarre statements and his admission of having a romantic relationship with a Russian agent. Maria Butina, who was convicted of plotting to infiltrate political circles and open lines of communication with Russia as part of unofficial influence. Basically, Patrick had a romantic relationship with a Russian spy. So it began on August 12th with Patrick issuing a bizarre statement and a press release to Overstock investors, saying starting in 2015 he was operating with the government and assisted in what is now to be known as the Clinton investigation and Russia investigation. It was the third time in his life he helped the men in black, stating when his friend was murdered, when he shook up Wall Street a decade ago, and this time for political espionage against Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. He then went on Fox Business and gave a bizarro interview, explaining his involvement with the deep state, who was giving him orders, and more off-the-wall comments. There was political espionage conducted against Hillary Clinton against Hillary Clinton. Patrick explains his resignation is his decision, not shareholders or the company board. And he is doing this because he has to. The interview is over 16 minutes and I would love to play the whole thing because it's entertaining and weird. If you wanna check it out, it's in the description. Now, I'm sure some of you are like, so what? What does Patrick Byrne have to do with cryptocurrency? Well, Patrick, as CEO of Overstock, was highly involved with two major crypto projects and indirectly connected to another two. These projects are Ravencoin, T0, and Flow. Before we get into his connection to these projects and the implications of his resignation, let's find out exactly how all of this went down. But first, let's learn a little history lesson about the past of Patrick. He founded Overstock.com in 1999, and it quickly became a popular e-commerce store. By 2002, Byrne took the company public with an IPO, and it quickly pumped to over $60 a share in 2004. But the recession came, and stiff competition from the giant Amazon crushed the price from 2005 all the way to 2016, which Byrne blamed on Wall Street and illegal naked short selling. This infamously became known as the Sith Lord. According to a New York Times article in August of 2005, during an hour-long conference call, he told an army of investors and reporters that Wall Street was plagued by a campaign to exploit a flaw in the stock settlement system to make millions at the expense of innocent companies, including Overstock. He said that this campaign is orchestrated by a single mastermind, which he termed the Sith Lord. He titled the conspiracy, The Miscarant's Ball. And according to the New York Times, Patrick said that the speech is among the top 10 proudest moments of his life. The Times also said that in the hour long call, Mr. Byrne talked about stinger missiles, Wayne and Garth, a mysterious Spanish phone message, stuttering and cocaine. I'm not a cokehead, Patrick said unprompted. I've included the full transcript of the phone call in the description. If interested, give it a read as it's batshit crazy. Then in 2013, Patrick was arrested at Salt Lake City International Airport for allegedly having a gun on his carry-on baggage, specifically a loaded Glock 2340 caliber. After this, he doubled down on his Sith Lord conspiracy, taking out a $100,000 ad in the Wall Street Journal, saying, congratulations on the indictment, Stevie, and remember, roll early, roll often. Your friend, Patrick M. Byrne, with him holding the head of Darth Maul from Star Trek. This was accusing Sat Capital Manager Steve Cohen of being one of the Sith Lords. 
Well, around this time, between 2013 to 2014, Patrick and his company Overstock started to get involved with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency to hopefully save the company from a free fall and provide another source of revenue. Overstock became one of the first large retailers to begin accepting Bitcoin as payment for products in 2014. That same year, Medici Ventures was founded by Patrick and Overstock, and this is a wholly owned subsidiary which invests and helps fund the development of blockchain projects. Things were pretty quiet for the next couple of years on the blockchain side of things, but as the market started to pick up, so did the expansion of Patrick and Overstock's crypto influence. In 2016, T0 was founded, which was going to be Patrick's answer to the Wall Street Sith Lords. And they're going to create, develop, and manage fintech products for capital markets using blockchain technology. With the booming markets in 2017, Medici expanded, and as of today, they claim to be involved with projects including T0 and 16 others. Now, as you can see, Ravencoin is not claimed whatsoever, and Medici and Overstock have been trying to keep their connections to each other as under wraps as possible, due to Ravencoin being marketed as truly decentralized. No ICO, no pre-mine, community-driven, and true open source. Well, Medici Ventures and Overstock is behind Ravencoin. I've done a video exposing this as well as the Binance Pump and Dump where CZ, early miners including Medici and Overstock cronies, where they cashed out big time. If you would like to check out that video, it's in the description as well as the tag above. But we can quickly confirm their involvement with Ravencoin with this digital rapper interview with Patrick from March of this year. The interviewer Derek asks, I had a chance to interview Tron Black, principal developer for Medici Ventures and lead developer on open source project Ravencoin. How do open source projects like Ravencoin and others like it fit within the vision you have for a tokenized world? And Patrick answers, what we are doing where possible is leveraging and integrating Ravencoin into these projects. Why would they want to leverage Ravencoin? Well, because in my opinion, they are behind it and mined the shit out of it during its early days when the hash rate was low and the coin was unknown, thus getting the high early block rewards, controlling a large chunk of the supply, and still having a coin that is legal in the eyes of the US because it was launched fairly. In late 2018, February to be exact, to get Ravencoin off the ground, it was announced that Patrick had invested millions of dollars into the coin. He lets Business Insider know in an interview. Let's hear a segment now. And are you interested in all uh, everything cryptocurrency or are you really interested in the blockchain or where do you separate the two? Well, I'm not really interested in cryptocurrencies per se, although in general, although I guess there's nothing wrong with me saying over there is an open source project of which I'm I'm really letting something big out of the bag here. I'll tell you. But there's an open source project called Ravencoin, which Overstock has put millions of dollars uh, into, into teams. We have people contributing to this open source project. We think this coin actually has quite a future. It's about, it's Bitcoin, but a thousand times more energy efficient. And there's other real interesting virtues to it. So Ravencoin. But other than that, I stay out of the cryptocurrency game. I'm building the, the uh, we're focusing on, applications of this technology and not just betting on coins themselves. So yes, he has invested millions and at the end he says they are building it. You don't invest in and build anything without a vested interest and return. Now what about Flow? Well, there's no direct connection of Overstock and Patrick to Flow, but there are many indirect ones as Flow's connected to T0 utilizing its blockchain and also Ravencoin and Flow have been working together on the Open Index protocol. So things are not looking good in this ecosystem of blockchain projects. Of course you have Patrick going AWOL and you know he has a large percentage of coins in each of these projects, which he could end up dumping on a dime if things go south between the projects he is involved with. And it looks like that is just what's happening. The T0 team page has immediately taken Patrick off, which if we look at web archive from just six months ago, he was included as executive chairman. If you scroll down a little bit further, you see T0 is involved with some more lovely people like Brock Pierce, which has also now been taken off the current team page. Hmm. 
This isn't the only problems for T0. Their ICO, which they raised $134 million for, was probed by the SEC, but eventually became an STO, which was reviewed by the SEC and luckily got confirmed to be okay, as only accredited investors could participate. Well, since the launch of the STO platform, trading has been extremely light with not much interest and its token price is way down at $3.15, with the STO offering price being $10. The market cap is just $82 million and volume is nothing, just $14,000. Regarding Ravencoin, just from the Patrick interview where he talked about investing millions into it, you know he has a fat stack of those coins. Having such a large investor as a loose cannon has to be worrying as a holder of any coin involved with Patrick. And if I held any of these projects, I would demand to publicly know his holdings of each. Ravencoin, T0 security token, and flow. Cheers viewers, I'll see you next time.